there are thousands of video games out there with incredible stories and a lot of them have either been missed entirely or forgotten about with the passing of time. Well some of these stories are too great to let fade away so we're gonna cover them and we're gonna start things off with one of my favorite games Parasite Eve. In New York City on Christmas Eve in 1997 NYPD officer Aya Brea decides to go on a date with the guy because he keeps bothering her and for some reason he thinks it's a good idea to take her to the opera. Not my thing, but to each his own. It starts off normal until the lead singer meets Aya's eyes, then people start to burst into flames. Aya, after shoulder checking her cowardly date out of the way, heads to the stage to confront the lead singer who is clearly responsible for the flaming deaths. The woman's confused about why Aya didn't catch on fire like the rest of the people, but then she realizes that Aya should be awakening soon since her cells are calling out to her. The woman's crazy, so Aya does the only sensible thing and shoots her. It doesn't do much, but that's clearly not the weirdest thing I have seen in New York City, so it doesn't seem to bother her all that much. But her body does start to get hot during the fight, but something inside of her stops her from bursting in the flames. Something that the weird actress says will eventually make Aya like her. The actress calls herself Eve and seems surprised that Aya doesn't know her. She claims that Aya should know her well, which makes Aya see a vision of what looks like a hospital room, but instead of telling her what the vision was about, Eve floats backstage and blows a hole in the floor that Aya follows her into. The first thing she sees after jumping into a deep hole with heels on and not breaking her ankles is a young girl who runs off and disappears. Aya heads through the basement of the theater after Eve, who somehow mutates a rat into a dog-sized monster that tries to kill her. The sight freaks Aya out, but that doesn't make her hesitate to shoot the thing until it's not only creepy, but creepy and dead. Checking out the rest of the rooms, Aya finds a clown who runs out of the room and dies, a bunch of crispy actors, and a journal from the main actress. Her real name was Melissa, and the journal shows that she's been taking a lot of medication. The person who had been competing with her for the lead actress role burned to death in a fire not that long ago, and what's more important is that the lead actress gets a solo in Central Park on Christmas Day, which means Melissa, or Eve, needs to die before then. Fortunately, Aya finds her in the next room playing the piano and arguing with herself. She says some weird things about nucleic domination coming to an end. She evolves into a very weird long armed woman thing and she seems surprised that Aya hasn't changed too. She figures that she just needs more time for her mitochondria to be free which is just as confusing to Aya as you might expect but she gets another vision of a hospital room. This time there's a little girl laying on an operating table and a doctor walks in before the vision ends. When it does Aya is alone. Apparently Eve went through another hole in the floor that apparently goes all the way to the sewers because reasons. Aya sees that same little girl again, but she disappears. The fact that Aya thinks that's normal is a sign that she's kinda dumb, which is also the reason she's not scared to fight Eve alone. Even though if anyone else was there, they'd just catch on fire. Aya wants Eve to tell her why, but she says she'll figure it out later, and if she doesn't, her mitochondria will. According to Eve, they've always known. Since Aya doesn't even know what mitochondria are, it'll be a while before she understands anything. Eve leaves to give Aya time to evolve, but she leaves behind a giant crocodile that tries its best to eat her. Because bullets apparently pack way more punch in this world than they do in the real one, they actually work and Aya manages to kill the crocodile. We're not even going to try to figure out how Aya made it back up the hole in the Carnegie Hall, but when she walks out of the building, a reporter's there and he bombards her with questions since she's the sole survivor of this horrible incident. She obviously doesn't want to talk to him, but reporters don't exactly respect personal space, so Aya's partner Daniel uses a bit of police brutality and punches the reporter which solves the problem. He apologizes for being late, but had he been there, he'd have died. But he did hear that Aya's date had run out of the building screaming, which is kind of hilarious, but Aya doesn't care since she only went out with him because he kept bothering her. In case you didn't know, that's a terrible way to try to get a date. As for the opera, the only reason she went there is because she saw an ad in the paper that just caught her eye. Daniel says it must be her police instincts finally kicking in, but whatever led her there is clearly the start of what is going to be the longest week of all of their lives. After Aya gets some much needed rest, she heads to the station to get everyone up to speed since she's the only one who knows anything about what happened at the opera. Daniel had already done some research on Melissa, the actress who's calling herself Eve now. She has no relatives or close friends, and she was sick a lot, which explains the constant medications. The people at the opera were surprised that the woman could even stand long enough to sing. Her apartment burned down on that same night, so there's no way to find out what medication she was actually taking. Being antisocial and sick are pretty normal, but it doesn't explain how she was able to set people on fire with her mind. 
It's hard to believe at all. Even the captain can't believe that they're about to be dealing with a super powered opera singer, but he still sends Aya to grab some heavier firepower from Taurus. The man runs the armory, but he's not that big of a fan of guns since his daughter was killed by one. Armed and ready, even though I don't see how a rifle is supposed to stop a bulletproof psychic, Aya runs into Ben, Daniel's son. The boy had come by to give his dad tickets to a concert, but with this new case, Daniel doesn't have time to go. He feels bad about it, but there's more important things to worry about at the moment. For starters, they have to deal with the press, and since Aya was the only survivor of the incident, Captain Baker wants her there. But he wants her to be quiet as much as possible, because the way the news works, they may try to make her into the bad guy. The press conference goes fine with the captain spinning a line of BS about chemical fires and such, but it immediately goes south when they ask Aya how she survived without even a burn, and she blurts out that Melissa said it was because her mitochondria were a mutation and the actress Melissa had her body taken over by a monster called Eve. Baker runs the press off before he yells at Aya. Whether what she said was the truth or not is irrelevant. In the best case scenario, people will think she's lying and the police are behind the incident. Worst case scenario, people will believe her and she'll start a panic. Since scared people do really stupid things, that's a serious problem. His rant is interrupted by a phone call from a Japanese scientist who was talking about mitochondria and saying he's on his way over. All this talk about mitochondria reminds Nix that he recently read about a researcher at the museum who had a new theory about the mitochondria. After what Aya told the media, it won't take long before a few reporters go over there to pester the man, so Aya and Daniel head off to the museum to speak with Dr. Hans Klemp, who specializes in genetic research, and he works at the museum because he's not a big fan of people, which of course means he'll be overjoyed to talk to the two cops. I was being sarcastic. He's not eager to talk to them at all, but seeing his face triggers Aya's memories and she sees Dr. Clamp standing over a girl in the hospital bed, which makes her think that she knows the man, but she can't quite remember from where. Antisocial or not, you can always get people to talk when you're asking about things that they're interested in. So when Daniel asks Clamp about his research and mentions the fact that the murderer thereafter said something about setting mitochondria free before burning people alive with her mind, he starts to talk. He's very unlikable, but he does tell you what mitochondria are. They are a part of each and every cell in the bodies of plants and animals and are responsible for creating the energy required for cells to function. Since they have their own DNA, they are basically a unique organism living inside of everything, a lot like a parasite. Granted, Dr. Clamp doesn't like it when Daniel calls them that since humans can't exactly function without them. Without them, the human brain couldn't even function. And since they can produce over 200,000 volts of electricity or heat, if every mitochondria in the body activated at the same time, setting a human on fire would be pretty simple. They also control growth, aging, and evolution, and they grow and change at a rate 10 times as fast as a human. A scientist tried to chart how fast mitochondria mutated to help figure out just how old humans were. In the late 1980s, it was announced that the origins of humans could be traced back to a single woman in Africa, and they called the woman mitochondria Eve. After hearing that, Aya tells Clamp that the murderer called herself Eve, which makes him go quiet, and he refuses to say anything else, so the two cops leave, only to get a call telling them that they have a lead on Eve's location, and they need to get back to the station. Melissa had a solo concert scheduled for that day in Central Park. The concert got canceled, but this was before the age of cell phones, so people didn't know, and they've all gathered at the stage. The concert's in Central Park, the same place that Daniel's son was trying to get him to go with him and his ex-wife. Daniel races off to save them, and of course Aya goes with him, but he can't even make him past the park's gate without his body starting to burn, so it's up to Aya. The place is extremely dangerous since Eve has apparently taken over the mitochondria of the animals and caused them to mutate, but Aya makes it to the stage just in time to see the entire audience get liquefied by Eve. Aya chases after Eve, fighting a very giant worm before she catches up to the woman. And because Aya makes the best decisions, she hops in a carriage with the woman who promptly sets the horse on fire so it races down the street. Eve still doesn't understand why Aya is fighting her instead of working with her since she should know who she is. But even though Aya doesn't seem to remember Eve, her body does, which is why she was drawn to the opera. Eve tries to talk to Aya's cells directly, saying that if the two of them join forces, all the mitochondria in the world will unite. But the horse finally dies and throws the carriage away from Eve, knocking Aya unconscious and causing her to see more visions of the hospital. Meanwhile, Daniel is still waiting for Aya at the entrance to the park when his son runs up. He had been with his mom, but she started to act weird. Ben had started to feel sick by the stage, so he ran away, but not before he saw his mom melt into goo with the rest of the crowd. 
News of the massacre spreads fast, and since it's so much worse than what happened the night before, the orders come down to evacuate Manhattan while the cops stick around to fight Eve. Unfortunately, there's been no sign of Aya, so Daniel leaves his son at the station with Kathy while he goes off to search for her. To distract the boy, Kathy introduces him to Shiva, one of the oldest police dogs at the station. While Daniel's searching for Aya, Maeda, the Japanese scientist who was supposed to be on his way to the station, shows up, but the cops won't let him into the city. Fortunately for him, but not so much so for one of the cops, one of them bursts into flames and Maeda uses the distraction to run into the city. After having more dreams of the hospital, Aya wakes up in a bed in a very rundown bedroom with Maeda sitting on a couch watching TV. The man had found her and called the cops, so naturally Daniel shows up. He's a bit creeped out by how empty the city is, even though it's great for the traffic. Since he's finally found Aya, Daniel wants to know what happened in the park to the audience. When she tells them that the audience melted, Maeda says something really unexpected. He says that nothing like this happened in Japan, meaning this weird event isn't unique. It happened a few years ago on a smaller scale. It started when a scientist's wife had a car accident. The scientist tried to culture some liver cells to help keep her alive, and he named the cells Eve. The cells multiplied and the woman's mitochondria took over her body. After getting some sperm from her husband by means that we don't need to explain, Eve tried to give birth to an ultimate being, one whose body could contain her rapidly growing cells. Before her accident, the woman had been registered as an organ donor, so her kidneys got transplanted into a young girl. A young girl that Eve put a fertilized egg in and used her to give birth to the ultimate being. But the creature didn't survive. The father's DNA didn't mesh with the creature, which is a good thing because there's no telling how powerful it would have been if it had survived. Maeda was interested in the scientist's research, so he went to the lab to see what he could learn. And when he heard about the incident in New York, he had to fly over. This stuff just keeps getting weirder and weirder, but Daniel's just happy that Aya's alive. He thought Eve had killed her. And Aya almost wishes that she had, because with her immunity and what seems to be happening to her body, she thinks she might be a monster like Eve. If she is, she doesn't want to end up killing Daniel by accident, so she sends him away and tries to get some sleep because she's afraid of something else. When she touched Eve, it reminded her of her sister Maya, who had died in a car crash along with her mother. The next day, Aya steps outside of the room and finds Maeda hadn't left like she had told him to. He'd slept outside of the building despite what could have happened to him, and Daniel shows up because regardless of how Aya feels, Daniel's not worried about her hurting him by accident or on purpose. They have a monster to deal with, so after they raid the local gun shop, the trio heads to the museum since it has a research facility that Maeda can use to test something that he thinks might be useful. And since Dr. Clamp should have been evacuated by now with everyone else, they shouldn't have to deal with the overly annoying man. Maeda had took some goo from Aya's clothing that he thinks came from Eve, and he wants to see how strong her power is on the cellular level, since the body that she's controlling should be breaking down. First, he runs the tests on his own blood, letting Aya see how Eve's cells attach to them and completely take over his. That's likely what happened to the animals that had attacked Aya. Normally, mitochondria never have the power to take over a cell, but Eve seemed to have evolved into something else entirely. Normally, those cells work in harmony with the other cells in the body, both keeping one another alive, but now Eve can just take over cells and siphon off what she needs. Aya is curious to see what happens when her own cells come in contact with Eve's, that way she can at least get an idea as to why she can fight the woman. When Eve's cells try to take over Aya's, her mitochondria give her cells more energy so they can fight the woman off. That explains how Aya is able to fight her, but that doesn't explain why her body evolved in a way to counter Eve's. Maeda has theories, but they don't get to discuss them before Clamp comes in. And of course, he's not happy to see them in his lab, but he is curious about Aya's cells and what's happening to her body once he looks under the microscope. He starts to question her, but Daniel sees a list of names on Clamp's computer, including both his ex-wife and his son. He was going to beat some answers out of the man, but Aya talks him down and they all leave. Maeda saw the list. It was a list that was used to determine if an organ donor would be a match for someone else. Daniel knows that Clamp is up to something, and he decides it's time to head back to the station to get permission to arrest the man. But when they get to the station, he's been attacked, and Aya gets the feeling that Eve is nearby. Daniel races off to find his son, and Aya follows him after Maeda gives her a good luck charm to waste inventory space. Things have gone bad for the NYPD. Cops are dead all over the place, including Torres who couldn't bring himself to fire a gun even with his life in danger. And those that aren't dead are in pretty bad shape. But things get serious when Kathy tells Aya that Shiva went crazy and ran off, and Daniel's son chased after her. 
The dog is clearly about to change into a monster and she's trying to escape before she hurts Ben, but he doesn't realize it. Lucky for him, Captain Baker grabs the boy right before she returns into a monster from Stranger Things. Unfortunately, Baker doesn't have the bullets to kill the elephant-sized three-headed dog. Aya makes it there just in time to deal with the dog before it can kill them. Baker's hurt, but not fatally, and he did manage to keep Ben safe, something that Daniel is extremely grateful for. With the captain injured, Daniel is put in charge, and the first thing he wants to find out is why Eve decided to attack the police station, especially since they haven't exactly been a threat to her. He figures that Maeda might have an idea. Aya wants to know why Eve didn't show up herself this time. She only felt the woman for a moment before she vanished. Maeda thinks it was a distraction, something to keep them busy while Eve hunted down a sperm bank. Her body likely won't last much longer, so Maeda thinks she's going the route of her predecessor in Japan and trying to give birth to an ultimate being. The nearby St. Francis Hospital had a doctor that specialized in artificial insemination, so Aya and Maeda head there, leaving Daniel behind so he can look into Dr. Klemp because he knows the man is involved somehow. It could be because the man gives off obvious bad guy vibes, or maybe he read the script. Either way, Aya and Maeda head to the hospital, and she realizes it's the one she had been seeing in her vision. The place makes Maeda feel hot when he gets next to the door, so after handing Aya another space wasting charm, she heads inside alone. Eve makes her presence known very quickly by cutting the elevator cables when Aya gets into it and cutting the power forcing her to run around in the dark and fight monsters while hunting for a way to repair the power. Because it's a video game she finds fuses in the area and uses them to restore the power and she also saves a few doctors and patients who were still around. That leads her into the very room she'd seen in her odd memories and she knows she was there but she still can't remember why. The hospital staff point her in the direction of the liquid nitrogen storage that they use to keep the sperm in the sperm bank from spoiling, so Aya decides that it'll be a good idea to turn it off, that way Eve won't be able to get the baby batter that she needs. In the process, she finds the exact same donor list that had been on Dr. Clamp's computer, along with the patient records of her mother and her sister who had been brought to the hospital on the same day as a girl named Melissa Pierce. An operation was done, but Aya doesn't know what it was because the pages were missing so she heads up to the roof where she knows Eve is waiting. In the meantime, the Navy is sending out fighter jets to search for the people from Central Park. On the roof, Eve sends a giant spider at Aya, but apparently it exceeds the roof's weight limit and falls through it during the fight, giving Aya access to Eve. She's surprised to hear that Aya knows what she's doing and how her sister failed in Japan, but Eve considers herself to be more evolved than her sister and she won't make the same mistake. While they're talking, the Navy's jets fly overhead, so Eve liquefies the pilots and causes the jets to come crashing down on the hospital's roof. Aya barely makes it off in time. Maeda and Daniel are waiting for her on the ground, where she has to let them know that she failed and Eve got away with what she needed. Daniel's got news of his own, which is why he even came to the hospital. Apparently, Melissa had been seen going in and out of the museum late at night on multiple occasions, which means Dr. Clamp had been working with Eve from the very beginning. The two of them have to be meeting somewhere soon, so Daniel sends everyone out to hunt around the city for the two of them because of the ultimate being is born, there may be no way to stop it. While she's hunting for Eve, Aya comes across signs that the blob monster that had been made from the people in Central Park was moving through the sewers. She finds it in the process of moving into the water reservoir, which would probably be bad for people's health, so she flushes it out and chases it. After dealing with a giant centipede because Eve seems to enjoy mutating the most disgusting creatures she can find, Aya sees the slime heading to the one place that she should have expected it to go, the museum. She races over there and catches sight of a man in a white lab coat, who is obviously Dr. Clamp, but her hunt is made a little more difficult by the fact that the alarm system has locked a lot of the doors and Eve has somehow resurrected some of the dinosaur bones and sent them to kill Aya. She fights her way past giant scorpions, velociraptors, and other things that should have killed her and she manages to turn off the alarm giving her full access to most of the museum. Since she's still getting in the way, Eve decides to finish Aya off by using the remains of the people from Central Park to resurrect the T-Rex. Instead of fighting it, Aya avoids the King of the Beasts and heads to Clamp's lab because she figures he'll be there, but he's not. Maeda is. He had wanted to test something, so he'd gotten Daniel to bring him over while he went to look for something at the hospital, but he should be on his way back to the museum by now. Maeda found a blood serum with Maya's name on it in Clamp's freezer under some research labeled Eve. Apparently it was made from liver cells that he had been cultivating for years, but all the data on what he was doing has of course been deleted. Recently the doctor switched and has been working on making artificial sperm for Eve, 
free of the male mitochondria so the ultimate being that Eve has won't die in the same way as the one from Japan. Clamp shows up while Aya and Maeda are talking and the guy starts ranting about the inferiority of humans and such. He's crazy but he also knows that Aya has special powers. She's evolved that far but she still has a human form. Since the alternative is her looking like Eve she should be grateful. Regardless he doesn't plan on letting her interfere with Eve's work. He goes to stab her but Daniel comes in and saves her by punching the man in the face hard enough to put him to sleep for a few minutes. When he wakes up he admits that he did remove the flaw that was in the ultimate being in Japan so Eve's will be perfect when it's born. And it will be born soon since Eve is going through the fastest pregnancy in history. He's done his part so he calls out to Eve to let her know that I and the others are in the room. As soon as she finds out Eve causes the room to burst into flames but not before Daniel and Maeda jump out of the window. They should still be very dead from hitting the ground from that height but we're dealing with video game logic so just roll with it. Clamp burns to death and Aya heads to the top of the museum to deal with Eve once and for all but she's attacked by a triceratops. She beats it but it tackles her over the side of the railing and she falls several floors. She doesn't come out of that unharmed but her body heats up and heals itself. Which is a good thing because the T-Rex sees her and attacks. Because her powers are growing she defeats it and comes face to face with an extremely pregnant Eve. She gets ready to put Eve down but the blob that had been the people from Central Park forms a really big human looking thing and reaches through the wall to drag Eve to safety. Daniel and Maeda who should be dead are waiting outside of the museum for Aya and they got a very good view of the disgusting creature. On a less important note Maeda knows what medication Melissa was taking and why. She'd had a kidney transplant as a kid and as luck would have it she'd gotten the kidney from Aya's sister Maya. I just can't understand why the girl's parents were so lazy with the name choices. Naming one kid Aya then just adding an M to the next kid's name just screams I'm lazy and don't care. Both Aya's mother and sister were organ donors but her mother was too badly mangled after the car wreck to use her organs but they were able to put Maya's kidney into Melissa which is why she had to take the pills to keep her body from rejecting it. There was an intern who was there for the operation and he was none other than Dr. Clamp and he heard firsthand how the doctors who removed Maya's kidney screamed about how unusually hot it was. At that point it was too late not to put it into Melissa which led to Maya's mutated mitochondria eventually taking over the woman's body. She sped up the process by overdosing on the medication which caused her immune system to weaken enough for Eve to fully take control. Technically this means that Eve is Aya's sister. Meanwhile the Navy finally gets permission to do more than just fly over the city. They launch an all out attack on the giant blob that's headed toward the Statue of Liberty. Apparently they didn't learn anything after Eve melted the last pilots but these die just as quickly as Eve's creature forms a protective barrier around her so she can give birth in peace. Realizing that they can't even hurt the thing, the Navy sends a helicopter to pick Aya, Daniel and Maeda up. Since she's the only one that can get close, they want to put Aya in a helicopter so she can fly up to Eve's monster and blow it up. The chopper will be on autopilot so all she has to do is ride and shoot. Other soldiers act as human shields to make sure she gets in range which works and she succeeds at blowing the thing apart along with Liberty Island. However Eve emerges from the goo alive and unharmed so Aya decides to parachute down to finish her off once and for all. They fight and it turns out that Aya's powers are greater than Eve's and the woman dies melting into the goo with a very creepy smile on her face. With Eve dead and Aya back safely on the Navy ship Daniel and the others think it's all over until everything starts to shake. It turns out that Eve dying hadn't stopped the ultimate being from being born and what has to be the ugliest baby ever pulls itself out of the goo and cries causing a lot of explosions. Everyone thinks it'll probably be a good idea to run but Aya decides to stay and try to kill the thing since she's the only one who can. Daniel can't really argue so he reluctantly agrees. Maeda tries to give Aya something but Daniel's not letting him waste any more of her inventory space with charms so he drags him off leaving Aya to fight the ultimate being. As she fights it it grows evolving into stronger and stronger forms until it transforms into something that Aya can't even hurt. From the helicopter above Maeda tells Daniel that if he'd only let him give Aya the special bullets he'd made this would have all been over. He had made them with Aya's cells and since her cells countered Eve's they should destroy Eve's offspring but it's too late to give them to her now. Daniel disagrees and in the most he definitely shouldn't survive this moment in a video game Daniel jumps out of the helicopter catches on fire and tosses Aya the bullets while in mid free fall before he slams into the ocean. Falling from that height and hitting the water like that alone should have killed him but you know video games. 
The bullets cause the ultimate being to start to break down, but they don't kill him. So Aya lures him to the center of the boat, sets the boiler to overload and jumps off leaving the creature to die in the explosion. What has to be the longest week of all of their lives is finally over, but Aya still can't understand why she has those powers. Maeda does. It's because a part of Maya was put into Aya too. She was only 7 when her sister died so she doesn't remember. She was born with a defect in her right eye so when her sister died they transplanted her right cornea into Aya. They say that when you experience serious trauma what you see is branded onto your cornea so the visions Aya was having of the hospital were the last things her sister ever saw. And the powers that Aya has came from her sister's last gift to her. Without that gift the city and likely the world wouldn't have made it. To celebrate, Aya, Maeda, Daniel, and Ben for some reason decide to go to the opera. And while they watch the show, Aya's eyes start to glow and her body begins to activate something in the people around her. Which means if another Eve shows up, Aya won't have to fight it alone. This concludes the story of Parasite Eve. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe, ding that notification bell, join the discord. And if you really want to show your support, you can donate to the channel through the link in the description. Until next time guys. Later.